This also uses in the palliative or helping with symptoms part of uh, cancer care. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. A. How can we use methylene blue, an old drug, for new uses? And what are those uses? Methylene blue is one of the oldest, or if not the oldest, synthetic medications. So have you heard of methylene blue? But how can a very old drug like this suddenly become something that we use for totally different and new purposes? So let's dive into this methylene blue discussion. And I've divided this up into kind of the top 10 factors to consider around this old drug that is being used in a new way. It is a drug, so it is done by prescription, and that is a good thing. So the first thing that you want to remember is in low dose methylene blue, it doesn't take very much. It's an outside, meaning it's not part of our body. Methylene blue doesn't exist in our body. But the big thing that it does is it can go to your mitochondria, which help you make the energy in your body, and it can be an accessory electron carrier, meaning beyond where your nutrients go into your body and we take certain things like the vitamin B3 nicotinamide, turn it into some you know, kind of advanced nicotinamides and help that run through the mitochondria to make energy by moving electrons around. Methylene blue can come in in support of that and actually add in more electron carrying capacity. More electron carrying capacity equals more energy. Now, you might be saying, oh, so it's just going to jack up my energy. Well, wouldn't caffeine do that or something, right? Well, it's not just for improving energy. When we talk about improving energy in the mitochondria, what we need to remember is most disorder and disease of the cell starts from the mitochondria and works its way out. Many disorders and diseases are when the mitochondria slow down or get broken and they can't produce energy for the cell. So the cell gets broken and slows down and then often it goes goes away. So the methylene blue helping with the energy is actually helping at the base level for many chronic illnesses, uh, certain conditions and cancer, other things of that nature. The other thing which is really interesting is, is that methylene blue adds to your natural processes that make the electron transport system work. Methylene blue actually adds on to it. It's not just priming it, it actually adds extra electron support to go through the mitochondria. So it's sort of double energy producing. It's been looked at a lot in a number of areas. One big area is in the neurology area because trying to get the brain repaired after certain types of diseases and disorders is quite a big problem. And the brain has some of the most dense areas of mitochondria in the body. So the first paper is uh, targeting mitochondrial dysfunction and central nervous system injury using methylene blue. If you have a high density mitochondrial tissue like the brain, you're going to have a high density need for repair hair there. So they've actually done studies uh, both with animals and humans in trying to target injured brains and get them back online. And how often do we hear about traumatic brain injury, post-COVID illness, brain fog, chronic headaches, all those other things, things of that nature. Also, they've looked at the actual thought processes and the, what they call connectivity in the brain. So another paper talks about methylene blue through its effect in the mitochondria helping to modulate the functional connectivity of brain tissue. And this, this looks at a lot of things such as not only our processing and executive function, but also things like memory problems and dementia, potentials for use in those areas. So again, a really not uncommon area of dysfunction that methylene blue, blue this very old drug for new purposes, may have a role in. Another one related to all that is actual looking at, in science, at protection from neurodegeneration. Well, we all can undergo neurodegeneration. We all do at a certain point, but it can be sped up by underlying genetic disorders, traumatic brain injuries, chronic brain trauma, chronic chemical traumas, infectious traumas. In the neurology literature, they talk about COVID being like a traumatic brain injury. So again, you can have infectious traumas, etc. And they, there are papers about the use of methylene blue with neurodegenerative conditions. There's also just some speculative papers about helping us with healthy aging. But it would kind of make sense if the sum total of
of our health is largely predicated on whether all of our cells have the right amount of electron transfer and the right amount of mitochondrial function that makes our cells healthier. The healthier all that is, the healthier we are going to be. And I think that's where they're going in that particular paper. And uh, got a paper in there that's looking at specifically tick-borne diseases. We hear about Lyme disease, but there's a lot of other diseases related. And methylene blue, it's used a lot in the chronic Lyme community, et cetera. How's that connect? It connects on a number of levels. One is there's a lot of energy depletion, but also damage to the mitochondria that occur when you have a chronic infectious disease such as, you know, Lyme or Epstein-Barr or any of the other chronic infections that people get. So we get damage eventually to the electron transport chain and the mitochondria in our, in our energy. But the other side of it is our immune system uses a lot of mitochondrial energy to keep up with stuff. And so imagine the beating that takes in a chronic infectious disease setting. There's also a really cool set of papers that I I just presented one of these at a hospital to the oncology department looking at use of methylene blue in repairing the damage to the mitochondrial DNA. So there's specific DNA that help us remake our mitochondria after particular type of chemotherapy induced injury. One of the problems with chemotherapy is that it goes in and it might help you with your cancer, but it's really hard on the rest of your body. It might be hard on your heart or your brain or your kidneys or you know, some other important part of you. In this particular type of chemotherapy, it's actually damaged directly to the mitochondrial DNA. If they get damaged, then they can't really form new mitochondria appropriately. And if it's in a sensitive area, like say your kidneys, then you get kidney damage. But the kidney damage really starts at the DNA level. And they've now, through modern science, found out ways why this happens, okay? What they're looking at is methylene blue can actually go in and it can undo the mitochondrial DNA damage, actually turn it off so that the cells have a chance to operate normally and build normal mitochondria even after an insult from particular types of chemotherapy. This also uses in the palliative or helping with symptoms part of uh, cancer care. And one of the things that's really horrible side effect with, with a lot of chemotherapy is they call it mucositis, but it can be anywhere from your lips all the way through your digestive tract where you can get swollen, you can get inflamed, it can be very painful. And in certain cases, the pain is so bad you can't eat or drink. It can be that bad. And so mucositis is always one of those things we're working with with cancer patients just to try and keep it uh, to a minimum or at bay. Well, they looked at treatment of mucositis, which you know, there are things to calm it down palliatively, but actually to treat it underlying, there's not as many things. But treatment of mucositis in pediatric patients, and they actually had very positive results uh, with a small trial in in, uh, children, so human trial in children. And then there's more papers coming out about this, and I mentioned it earlier, but repurposing methylene blue in the management of COVID-19. If we think about it, among the many, many reasons that SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, creates trouble in the body and creates long COVID and all those bad things, a lot of them are because of the immunologic dysregulation that, that that virus has, like many other infections, but SARS-CoV-2 is a little more aggressive in some areas, and then that immunologic deregulation beats up on the cells, beats up on the mitochondria, and it takes people, some people with long COVID, a long time to recover. So they're looking at repurposing methylene blue, just like we talked about with all these other things in the setting of COVID and long COVID as well. So those are just 10 of many, many, many areas in science that we're looking at the use of repurposed methylene blue. Number one, remember, it is a drug. It has to be monitored and dosed appropriately. It should never be ordered online and dosed on your own, et cetera. Number two, you need a healthcare provider who is used to using methylene blue. And uh, most healthcare providers, everybody's heard of it for its emergency use in certain types of blood disorders, but you need a provider who's used to using low-dose methylene blue in these other settings. Dr. A, I'll see you all on the next video.